okay, how can I explain this problem without saying words that will cause people to shut off? And those words are like mining, proof of work, Bitcoin, computers, just computers in general. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if I could explain Bitcoin without even mentioning computers? And it was like, ah, okay, I'm gonna have to spend some time thinking about this now. And I guess I came to the the best metaphor that I could um, that was using mental models that people will have already formed throughout their lives and then applying those mental models to explain why Bitcoin is designed the way that it is and also how it's designed um, without really telling them the reader that I'm talking about Bitcoin and then later on in the book I explained that that was actually Bitcoin and if you just replace some of the words with different words then you're literally explaining Bitcoin and so I write this sort of little um, sort of uh, the uh, this analogy really um, that's talking about villagers who go about their daily lives using money etc and then they wake up one morning with amnesia they can't remember a thing and all of their money is gone and they have to rebuild a functioning civilization out of their village which obviously it's going to have to include trade because everybody's skills are specialized and so they need to continue doing what they're doing and make it so that you know the farmers aren't the only ones that don't starve to death um, and so they end up basically finding a ledger or a filing cabinet really full of a bunch of pieces of paper where they've been keeping track of or accounting for all of the trades that they've been making amongst each other in the village and so at this point they don't even know that money ever existed. They've never heard of the idea because they've got amnesia. And so they find these, these lists and they think, ah, we've been trying to do barter and stuff and we've been coming to the same problems that you are going to encounter when you have barter, which is you need the coincidence of once and etc. etc. And we've figured that it would be great if we had some third good uh, that was desirable by everybody at all times so that we could keep trading and the farmers could trade when they don't have crops. and and so on and so forth. We need a way to store the value that we're producing with our work. And they come across this list of all the transactions and they go, ah, that's it. This must be what we used before we forgot, our me before we lost our memories. And so they then have a new set of challenges, which is they assume that that is money, just the actual written things. And they can add up all of the amounts and it's mathematically sound, so they can figure out who, uh, who had X amount you know, who had this much money, who had that much money, and everybody was able to add up uh, all of their incomes from and subtract from it, the sum of all of their outcomes, and figure out how rich they were, so they had a bunch of fun doing that. And then they had to come up with a way that they could continue trade and continue using this money without coming to a bunch of disputes and without posing any security risks by centralising control authority over that ledger without... Uh, at a singular point of failure where somebody could decide to run off with all the money or stop working or stop or just die and then all of a sudden you don't have a way to continue trade so they essentially come to bitcoin as their solution but without computers and just with pieces of paper instead and and then the villages end up being actual uh, analogous to nodes and the actual obviously the, the list of transactions is analogous to the blockchain and and they find a way to basically have a uh, consensus about the state of the chain, uh, the state of the chain of ownership, by meeting at the end of every day and doing this Rubik's Cube race, and the winner of the Rubik's Cube gets to add uh, the most recent entries to the ledger. And if you win the Rubik's Cube race, obviously, you put a lot of effort into solving your Rubik's Cube. And uh, it also highlights how it's randomized, and that the actual Rubik's Cube isn't the where the value is. The Rubik's Cube is just arbitrary. And so everybody's doing this Rubik's Cube race and, and the more people that participate in this race, the harder it gets to beat. And so there's the difficulty adjustment in there. And so everybody's doing this Rubik's Cube race, it gets harder to beat. And then you have the game theory explained by the fact that if this race has got quite big and everybody take, is putting in a lot of effort now to solve their Rubik's Cube so that they can earn the prize of 6.25 Bitcoins. But, you know, in the analogy, it's I forget what the, the, the money is called, but if you're putting in all that energy, chances are you're not going to want to submit a false record of, of what is owned because it won't 
you can do it and you can pass it around to everyone and say, look, I solved the Rubik's Cube race. I, I did it genuinely. Here's my list of transactions. And it's just like one million pounds to me. And everyone's going to be like, nah, I, I know you solved the race and all, but no. And so that's literally what Bitcoin does. And I, I then try and basically go, that's all it is. And, and hopefully it's not too intimidating to people that don't have any background in computers or, or anything like that.